it is Joanne from No Guilt Mom where we help you feel less guilty about all things parenting. And um, yeah. there's a difference between guilt and shame. Um, guilt is that feeling that uh, you did something wrong, something that you have control over, and you have a way to fix it. Guilt is kind of saying like, hey, maybe I shouldn't do that thing next time. It's actually a perfectly healthy thing, except that we tend to blow it up into like, odd, like unrecognizable proportions, where uh, we have these really, really high expectations for what we should do, especially as moms, and what we shouldn't do, and then this overwhelming guilt uh, makes us feel miserable. Now, shame, on the other hand, is something that you feel bad about that you think is an inherent part of yourself, like that you're born with these qualities, um, that you're a bad person, that you make bad decisions, you know, all that negative self-talk that we give to ourselves, that is a produ like that produces shame. So I like I have a lot of shame, I have to admit, and I think that a lot of the moms that I talk with um, have a lot of shame as well. And just as an example of something that I felt shame about in the past week uh, that I cannot control, but maybe maybe um, you will, you'll know what I'm talking about uh, when I describe this situation. Because <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny, but it's also, it made me feel incredibly bad um, at the same time. So I just went to Florida. Um, I was in Orlando for eight days for a work conference and then meeting with my mastermind group. My mastermind group is phenomenal and uh, they helped me make No Guilt Mom just a better place and a better business. Uh, so while I was there, um, I talked a lot about my puppy. Well, she's like, she's right there on the bed. Uh, her name's Addie. She's just over a year old and she's rather rainbow, rambunctious. Uh, she's big, she's 60 pounds, and uh, even though that we have made huge steps, huge steps in her behavior, uh, she's still a little unpredictable. Uh, and so we decided that when I was gone and my husband like works full days, that she would go into doggy daycare. Well, the whole week of doggy daycare went phenomenally well. And then the last day I was walking through Disney Springs, which is this like shopping district, um, right after we all had dinner and I get this text from my husband. And the text says like one thing, Addie was banned from doggy daycare. And I'm like, what? How can a dog get banned from doggy daycare? Well, she bit another dog in the ear. And Addie's like never shown aggression whatsoever before, but apparently they're all waiting at a fence to get in and this other dog, it's always the other dog's fault. This other dog did something to piss my dog off, obviously, and she bit him in the ear and she would not let go. And thus she is banned from doggy daycare forever. Now, um, we, we kind of like talked about this, this whole situation, and um, my husband was like, uh, you know, Addie didn't eat that morning uh, because she was so tired from all her playing at doggy daycare that our other dog, Lily, ate her food. And he's like, leave it to us. Then we have a dog who gets so hangry, she eats another dog. It's totally, it's totally <laughs> makes total sense, right? But when I heard this, I immediately felt this overwhelming sense of shame like going through my head, even though I can't control my dog, like I don't know who can control my dog, even though I can't control my dog, I'm like, oh my gosh, I am such a horrible person. I cannot believe that I I chose a dog, I chose to adopt a dog and then enrolled them in doggy daycare. This sounds even ridiculous, me saying it out loud. Enrolled them in doggy daycare and sh she bit another dog and like, this other dog had to go to the vet and I didn't even ask. I didn't ask how the other dog was doing because honestly, like, I'm scared to know. And the shame, something I have no control over whatsoever, just permeated me. But I think that happens to all of us. And I saw the same reaction in my daughter. Like when I was on the phone with my daughter later that night, she just could not stop crying because Addie got in trouble. And we feel like, I felt like I was in trouble because my dog got kicked out of doggy daycare. <laughs> but we get this way. And I know I'm not perfect in dealing with it, though I think, I think, 
that we are all making progress. Um, and I know that me talking about it and talking to you puts the label on that shame and it makes it less of a scary thing. So if you are feeling shameful about anything right now, if you're saying to yourself, I'm a bad mom, I'm a bad parent, I'm a bad person, first of all, it's probably not true. Like, definitely not true. If you're watching No Guilt Well, it's not true. You're obviously trying to get better uh, at all things parenting and that by definition makes you an excellent mom. But give a name to your shame. Try to figure out exactly why you're feeling that way. Say it out loud. When you say it out loud, you give a name to it, it becomes less shameful and it may even sound ridiculous when you start talking about it. Kind of like me saying how I felt shameful that my dog was kicked out of doggy daycare. Um, Sounds kind of funny. So wherever you are, remember that the best mom is a happy mom. So take care of you. Uh, remember to uh, go, if you have not gotten those five survival secrets for the overwhelm mom that I have, go pick those up. Those are some easy, easy tips you can incorporate right now in your life to make uh, your everyday easier. I mean, I'm gonna use one of them right now tonight with dinner. So. Go pick that up. The link is right down there. And until next time, the best mom is a happy mom. So take care of you and I will see you later.